One thing I don't get, and perhaps you can explain this to me, Hidden Hand, is why those who belong to Lucifer, and Lucifer himself, do not fight for the freedom of all souls. If he represents liberty, freedom of will and knowledge, why do those who serve him not do as the biblical Lucifer did, and rebel against the tyranny of the elders? This is a very good question, thank you. I will split it into two parts, and answer the second part after this. Firstly, the council of elders are the absolute opposite of tyrannical. They are the wise and loving guardians of our galaxy. There is so much that one cannot understand from only a third density perspective. When you reach higher densities, you see that ultimately everything balances, and there is only one unity. All else than unity is illusion, or thought form. The council gave us a set of choices. We chose to stay here to help you, despite the cost to ourself. That is the nature of loving service to others. The ultimate paradox in all this is that in this storyline, we are all co-creating together. In order for us to be of the most service to you, we must be utterly self-serving. I do so love our creator's sense of irony. As to the first part of your question, the biblical depiction of war in heaven is not entirely inaccurate. I shall explain. Our initial contract was to introduce the catalyst for free will on this planet. When Yahweh initially began discourse with the Council of Elders, he was not initially looking for help with introducing free will, but rather for guidance on how he could best speed up his and his inhabitants' evolutionary process. As I mentioned, he was running a benign dictatorship. We had at that time just completed an assignment in Tau City and had reported for our next duties. We, as Group Soul Lucifer, were sent on a fact-finding expedition, as it were, to visit Earth and meet with Yahweh to evaluate his planetary creation laws and make suggestions on how best he could help his offspring. This is the term I shall use to describe the souls who comprise the Group Soul, and thusly, Yahweh to progress. We explored many options and reported our findings to the Council and to Yahweh. It was our best evaluation that the only real and fast-track way to increase his involvement meaningfully was the introduction of free will. It was not specifically the implementation of free will that Yahweh wanted help with. It was simply the introduction of a catalyst. He was not at all pleased with our report that he needed to implement free will. He was happy with his little pet paradise and did not want to lose control of it. In the end, the council persuaded him that it was the best way, and he reluctantly agreed. We returned to Earth and had a cordial meeting with Yahweh, discussing how we could best implement the free will option. Yahweh was adamant that his offspring would choose to be loyal to him anyway, and that they were so contented with the way of life that they would always trust him and do as he said was best. That, he said, was his main reason that free will would not work well as the catalyst. That's why he agreed to the experiment of the Tree of Knowledge. He believed it would prove him right. When it did not, he became angry, threw his toys out of the pram, and his offspring out of the garden, and laid a big guilt trip on them about how they had broken his trust and disobeyed him. That's not really an honorable way for a Logos to behave, but hey, that's the beauty of free will, I guess. Next problem to occur was that his offspring was so grateful to us for our help that Yahweh became, in his own admission, a jealous god. Then we had the whole, you shall have no other gods than me thing. We were not pleased with the situation at all, as a logo should not be behaving like this with his offspring. They are one, after all. When we attempted to leave the planet to return to the council, Yahweh prevented our departure. We tried to leave again, and were then thrown down into the astral planes, and confined therein. The council ordered us to be released, but said we would have to cancel our contract to help the souls on earth to evolve. We did not want to leave. We found them very likable beings, really positively polarized, and we wanted to stay and help. We just wanted also to be free to come and go as we pleased. The only way we could stay was to stay confined as a group soul, which meant cycles of incarnation for us as individuated souls, which we had not done for a long while. As I've stated before, 
There is no wrong or right seen from a higher density, but there are still consequences for every action. Such is the law of karmic effect. The contract had already been made between Yahweh, us, and the council for us to provide the catalyst, so we had a right to be there. The infinite creator gave Yahweh and all the gift of free will to create as we choose, but the karmic effect of his choice was the council quarantining the planet. A certain evolutionary level is required to be a functioning part of a positive unified galactic society. As for fighting for the freedom of all souls, remember that ultimately this is a game that we are all playing here. We are actors playing on the stage of life. This world is all illusion or thought form. No one really dies and no one is really hurt. In between incarnations, you know this very well, but the rules of the game ensure that you must forget who you really are so that you believe it is all real whilst you are playing the game of life. That is an essential prerequisite when you are making choices, otherwise the game would be too easy. This world is not reality, though we can express reality in it, if we so choose. Okay, so your family and fellow elites might be as entrapped in the earthly realm as we are, but why actively propagate and aid the forces of enslavement? Because this is the part we have been contracted to play. In this game, in order to win, or more accurately, to be successful in the game, we must be as negatively polarized as possible. Service to the self in the extreme. Violence, war, hatred, greed, control, enslavement, genocide, torture, moral degradation, drugs, all these things and more. They serve our purpose in the game. The difference between us and you in the game is that we know that we are playing. The less you know about the game, and the less you remember that you're a player, the more senseless living becomes. In all these negative things, we are providing you with tools, but you do not see it. It is not what we do, but how you react to it. That is important. We give you the tools. You have the free will choice how you will use them. You have to take responsibility. There is only one of us here. Understand that, and you will understand the game. Something I found extremely interesting is the concept of the Grand Age of Procession being split into five 5,125 year cycles. 3113 BC, the beginning of the current sub-age, was the time of great activity. It is the construction of stone monuments in Western Europe, the Middle East, and Egypt at this time related to the recognition of the cycle? What was the purpose of Britain's stone circles and Egypt's pyramids? They are more than mere markers of an eon change they must have had some enormous significance. Actually, something I'd most like to know is, were the builders of these monuments members of the enslaved masses who were trying to understand the nature of existence, or were the builders members of your elite bloodline? Yes, there is significance in these occurrences, according to space-slash-time of their happenings. The group Soul Complex Ra was the architect of these structures. They were created from thought. When one understands and see that all is illusion or thought, one can use the force to manipulate the illusions. All things, seen and unseen, are interconnected life force energy. Once you know what the magician knows, it's not magic, it's a tool of creation. Thank you for your questions, they were very insightful. It's your kind that has ruined the world. Thinking of yourselves are higher than anyone. If I saw you in real life, it would not be pretty. You lack understanding, not to mention eloquence. To understand higher, try thinking outside of the box for a moment. If I am walking along the ground, and you are flying above me in an airplane, does that make you better than me? No, it just makes you higher. I will see you in hell. Be careful what you wish for. All thoughts and words are creative. Shas, thank you for your questions. I believe I have already dealt with many of them in my previous answer to the session, though if you feel I've missed anything, please say. If Yahweh is a positive polarity entity, how is he wrathful and jealous? Does Yahweh have free will? Would you like to think of yourself as reasonably positive? Can you still be wrathful and jealous at times? Is Yahweh a macrocosm of you? Has there been over time other entities pretending to be Yahweh? On occasions, yes. I would like to know, how do we choose a service to others? positive path, over a service to self, negative. 
Is this statement correct? In order to choose the positive path, at least 51% of our thoughts and actions must be dedicated to the service of others. For the negative path, at least 95% must be self-serving. Between the two lies the sinkhole of indifference. Your statement is correct, yes. So you see how hard we must strive for negativity. It takes a lot of effort to reach 95% negativity. Also, you may be surprised how many people on the planet are nowhere near reaching 51% positive. How do you choose a service to others path? Be good to yourself. Cultivate a genuine love for life and for being. Be genuinely thankful to the infinite creator every day for bringing you into being and for his bountiful provision. You have survived this far, have you not? You may not have everything you want, but you have everything you need in order to complete that which you incarnated here to do. Give thanks for that. Show acknowledgement and gratitude to the infinite creator for all that it has done and is doing for you. It has given you the gift of life experience and offered you the free will to decide what you will create with it. Guard your thoughts carefully, as they are more powerful than you may imagine. When you are coming from a place of love for and service to your creator, a life of service to others will become a natural outflowing from that. Always look for ways that you can be of assistance to your fellow beings. Being of encouragement to others, build people up and do not put people down. Be a beacon of light in a dark world. Does that old lady need a hand with her shopping bags? How do you treat the homeless man who asks you for some spare change for the shelter? Ever heard about angels in disguise? Look and see divine spark in the heart of all beings. Treat them as you would like to be treated yourself and as you would your creator if he was speaking directly with you. For even as you are doing it to the least of these, you are doing it unto me. The law of radiation and attraction. Your thoughts, words, and actions return to you. Ultimately, cultivate a spirit of humble gratitude. You won't go far wrong with that. Desire to serve flows naturally from a grateful heart. If we live with a service to others philosophy in order to achieve oneness with the infinite source, isn't that really service to self? How is the distinction of negative and positive polarity made? You do not serve others to achieve oneness with the infinite source. You serve others because you love them as yourself. Others are an extension of yourself. That's why the law of attraction works the way it does. Truly, whatever you are doing to me, you are doing to yourself. We are all one in the infinite creation. Separation is an illusion because you can only see what is in the third density. You do not see the whole picture. We achieve oneness with the infinite source of all as a result of our upward spiral of progression. We are all on the path back to where we came from. We are all on our way back home. It's my understanding that all souls must eventually choose the positive path to unite with the infinite creator. If this is true, what is the justification of choosing the negative for your people and us? An astute question. Yes, all souls eventually learn that positive is the pathway which leads home. But whilst incarnating in the third density, negativity is still an important tool in your learning process. It teaches you other than. As I said earlier, it is up to you how to use the tools we have given you. Do you respond to negativity with more negativity? Has fighting fire with fire ever worked for you? Or do you choose to see negativity as a tool that it is and recognize that it is offering you an opportunity? I will honor your free will to think and discover for yourself what that opportunity is. Or if the one infinite creator is love, does that mean it does not matter if we choose love of others or love of ourselves? Will either path lead to the source? In a sense, you are correct to a certain point, but there is a big difference between loving yourself and being selfish. A big difference. When you truly understand what it is to know and love yourself, you cannot help but to love and serve others. There are no others. When you understand this at the core level of your being, you will be on the path home to the infinite creator and ultimately submergence back into the infinite oneness. I agree with many others that your answers are very much in line with several sources I have read in the past, including the channelings of Ra, the Cassiopeians, and several others. Can you explain your interpretation of such channelings and if they are another source of disclosure from your people? 
I have spoken on Ra in my previous answers today. I have not heard of Cassiopeians. There are no other communications from my family at this time than this one, though there is a possibility of another soon, depending upon certain events. My general view of channelings is that the majority of them are of very poor quality. That is not necessarily a slight against those bringing them through, but more a matter of the lack of receptivity and subsequent distortions. It is very rare to find a good, stable, clear, and impartial channel. The key element in channeling is the ability to temporarily withdraw the filters of your own personal beliefs and be a clear channel to bring through what is actually given, not your slant on what you think it might mean. When I am saying you, I mean this in a general term, of course here, not you personally. Always remember that it's meant to be about the message, not the messenger. The raw channelings are very accurate, indeed. They are the only ones I know of that I would be happy to classify as a clear message. Though, as I say, even then, it is not 100%, more like 85 to 90%. Another difficult issue with channeling is that you can start off receiving a positive entity, and if you are not very perceptive in your discernment and careful in your protection when identifying an incoming channel, you can get a negative one that pretends to be positive, but gradually slips in more and more misinformation, having gained your trust. The ones that give you precise dates and times are nearly always ones to avoid. Positive entities will not give a date and time. Negative ones will do, so they can set you up for a fall. Once you're tricked into predicting dates and times, and they don't happen, they've succeeded in putting out the light of your message, as no one will see any credibility in you. Well, now we know the point of this thread. Someone just discovered New Age theology and wanted to take the time to type out his discovery. OP, still waiting for you to provide a prediction with a timeline. So far, all you've offered is general doom, which is what everyone on ATS predicts every year. Need something specific in the next week. Of course, I know you won't provide anything. This is a hoax. This will be the only time I reply to you. At the outset of our discourse here, I made it expressly clear the way I am choosing to operate. If you do not like my choices, you have the free will to not read this disclosure. I would kindly suggest that you use it, as your energy is feeling very frustrated and angry. That's not really an advisable direction to want to be heading under the circumstances. As I took the time to explain to you before, I have nothing to prove to you. This is not why I came. Believe or do not believe. I am divinely indifferent. If my presence here ends up benefiting just one soul during the process, it will have been worth the effort. I have not asked you to believe. The only thing I have respectfully asked was that you suspend judgment or hold a provisional faith until the discourse is complete so that the flow of questions and information remains uninterrupted. You have shown me nothing but discourtesy and bad manners from the outset, and then wonder why I do not respond. If you do not like the topic, simply choose not to read or reply, and let those that do wish to participate with insightful questions do so uninterrupted. Your points. 1. New Age Theology. That is amusing. You clearly have not the faintest comprehension of just how ancient and timeless these mysteries are. I find it ironic low-level mason, that if you ever make it to the 42nd degree, you are going to find yourself hearing these truths all over again. I hope that you will find it easier to integrate these truths then, and I ask our infinite creator to guide your path. 2. You will not be receiving any times or dates from me. I am not here to prove anything, and I have no need to do so. Your disbelief is of no consequence to me, only to you. I am here to diligently discharge the duty given to me of delivering a message, and I will complete that duty regardless of your feelings about it. 3. As to your point regarding doom and gloom, this just serves to reveal your mindset. Where you see doom and gloom, I see opportunity. Life conforms to your ideas about the way it is for you. If you see doom and gloom, then that is what you are projecting. The world is your mirror. It reflects back to you what you are putting out. If you do not like the reflection life is showing you, then change that which is causing it. You see, if this really existed, there would be countless of thousands of people involved, 
and any one person could leak. Thousands, try millions, and you have no possible comprehension of the rigorous training and the harshness of the conditioning we undergo from an early age. No one dares to go against the family. We know what would happen if we did. But that is not the prime motivator. The motivator is unbridled loyalty to the family and our creator. We understand the importance of what we are doing here, even though most of humanity does not. Oopsie OP, you just shut yourself in the foot. For someone who only deals with manipulating the spiritual side of life, you sure do know a lot about things that have nothing to do with it. You just exposed yourself. Do you not sit down with your family and keep one another abreast of your plans? As to your remarks about my spiritual role, the ignorance you demonstrated is most humorous to us. If you think I only deal with the spiritual, you have either not read or misread my posts. You also make the assumption that my role is about manipulating the spiritual side of life. Again, you lack understanding and then make false judgments about that which you have no comprehension of. You would do well to stop trying to be clever and instead channel all this misplaced aggressive energy of yours into something more productive and nourishing to your soul. But don't let me stop you. You are contributing nicely to the overall negative polarity of the coming harvest. We are grateful to you. We bid you a good evening. Unfortunately, I was unable to be in attendance yesterday due to unforeseen events. I will now get to your questions. I'm wondering if you can help me. My name is Shelby David, and I am here for the coming trials and tribulations. I am a part of Quetzalcoatl, or the rebirth of it, as far as I know. I know many of your words to be true, because I had already rediscovered these truths through finding that which resonated most with me through the various belief structures of this planet. Good evening, Shelby. It is good to see you again. It has been a while, old friend. Would it surprise you to know that we were expecting you? Quetzalcoatl is also a sick density soul group, social memory complex. Some refer to Quetzalcoatl as an ascended master, although he would be most amused by that title, knowing as he does that mastery is still some way off at this point for him, as well as it is for ourselves as group soul Lucifer. One can be accurately described as having mastered a particular density. The mastery of the entire creational incarnation cycle does not occur until one has once again attained submergence back into the one infinite creator. We may choose to do so once attaining eighth density ascension, or once may choose instead to progress up to the next octave of densities and begin a new cycle of creational incarnation challenges. This is my first time on earth in a long time, possibly ever. I have known for quite some time and been told by another from one of the bloodlines in your group that I do not truly exist here. You are correct in that you have not been here for a substantial period of earth time, though not that you have never been here before. The group soul, Quetzalcoatl, enjoyed many for density incarnational cycles back in the classic Aztec period. He struggled at first with perfecting love for others, which held back his progression for quite some time. However, once he had come to the realization of our inherent unity, he was able to see himself in others, and his, your progression, was rapid from there on in. Your Quetzalcoatl soul group attained positive harvest with a very impressive 76% at the time of the subsequent harvest. Naturally, when a group soul is undergoing an incarnational cycle in third density, its individualized soul portions, i.e. you, are the ones who are doing the actual physical incarnations, with the oversoul, the higher self, of your individuated souls acting as the energy anchor, in which the individual soul sparks are stepped down from. You spent a long while working your way through the fifth density, the density of wisdom or light. This was due in the main part to an overabundance of compassion, which is not a bad thing, as compassion is one of the main things you work on at fourth density. However, to graduate from fifth to sixth density, the density of unity, one must learn the balance between compassion and wisdom. The sixth density is hence sometimes known as the density of compassionate wisdom due to one having learnt the balance between the two. This required many incarnational cycles for you, which is why you correctly feel that you have not visited third density earth for a long time. I was not expected to show up, I originally had other previous engagements, but I managed to get here at the last minute. One of the things I've remembered is that I am too under contract. I am a walk-in, 
if that makes sense to you. So my human family is not like me. I have spent a long time traveling to various densities and helping in the various revolutions here. Your inside serves you well, Shelby. This not only applies to you, but your entire soul group. Quetzalcoatl, the macrocosm of yourself, has been busy for the last two cycles working with a fifth density group on Alpha Centauri, who were experiencing similar problems with an overabundance of compassion at the cost of personal wisdom. You recently completed your assignment there and were eager not to miss out on the glorious opportunity to be a part of this great harvest. Whilst your group, as I said, did eventually learn to balance love slash light to graduate into the sixth density unity vibration, you still are very much prone to extreme compassion. And rather than take the usual period of time slash space and time out of universe, where we rest between incarnations, you were keen to jump aboard this third density space slash time whirlwind at this point to be assistance to your fellow beings here. My problem is my memory malfunctioned, and some of the things that I have remembered from my previous existences do not correspond with your words. I have met Lucifer and his generals on more than one occasion. I would appreciate any information you may know of that could clear up my confusion as to why my thoughts are so jumbled, because I know what my path is clearly, and I am awaiting the starting point, but I am not completely clear on what truly is happening here. Thank you for your time. You have indeed met with us before, on many occasions. We have worked together on various council and confederation assignments. Use the gift of your Dreamtime communications, which are important communications from your Oversoul and many other sources whereby information is downloaded, to plug in to your inner data bank. Begin recording everything you recall upon awaking, and do not give up on the process, even though it is hard at first. You will begin to slowly make sense of the information which is being downloaded into your subconscious mind. When you become proficient at this and can use your dream time as a method of inner communication, ask our infinite creator to remind you of your time in the Zeta Reticuli system. You will remember then our last period of service together. I would hope with much fondness. Sadly, my time here is only permitted until Friday. Therefore, we will not likely communicate again after this message. So I wish you the very best with your assignment here, my friend. Both your individual one and that of your group soul. I ask that our infinite creator bless and guide your path. We look forward to seeing you on the other side when this grand ride is over. Our love, wisdom, and peace be with you.